फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक वंस अगेन टू द कोर्स करंट रेगुलेटरी रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर कंडक्टिंग क्लिनिकल ट्रायल इन इंडिया फॉर न्यू ड्रग एंड द इन्वेस्टिगेशनल न्यू ड्रग सो दिस इज आवर लेक्चर नंबर ट्वेंटी कॉमन ऑब्जर्वेशंस ड्यूरिंग क्लिनिकल ट्रायल और बी ए बी स्टडी सेंटर साइड्स इन आवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर दैट इज लेक्चर नाइनटीन वी हैव सीन द कॉमन ऑब्जर्वेशंस एंड द कॉमन डिफिशेंसीज Uh, which are at the submission of the protocols so in this lecture the learning objective is uh, we'll see what is the mandate of inspection which is the rule which says the inspection and what is the purpose of the inspection what are the types of inspection what are the types of deficiencies and what is inspection what could be the obligations of this inspection and what could be the punishment so let us see as we know that in the new drug and clinical trial rule there is a rule number 29 which is related to the inspection of premises relating to the clinical trial and one more rule is there which is related to the inspection of the premises of the uh, bab study centers so as per this rules the applicant uh, maybe it is a organization or institution any person who has taken the permission uh, who has obtained permission from the licensing authority to conduct the clinical trial or to conduct the bioavailability and uh, bioequivalence at uh, Uh, study center and those the applicant who have granted the uh, study uh, center permissions so they shall allow any officer authorized by the central licensing authority that uh, licensing authority or that the officer designated he may accompany with the state licensing authorities and he may with or without notice he may enter into the premises where the study center has been granted or proposed to be uh, granted or the clinical trial site where the permission has been granted and he may inspect search or seize any re record related to the clinical trial or related to the study centers now what is means by inspection so actually inspection it has not been defined our in our new drug and clinical trial rule but this is the definition i have taken it from the ich gcp section 1.29 as per this definition it is the inspection is act by regulatory authorities in case uh, of india it is a state licensing authority or the uh, cdso that is central licensing authority of conducting an official review of document facilities record and any other resources that are deemed by the authority to be related to the clinical trial and that may be located at the site of the trial at the site of the sponsor cro at the facility of the sponsor or at any other establishment deemed appropriate by the regulatory authority so regulatory authorities is uh, empowered to search and have the inspection of these sites so this is the inspection let us see in which cases the inspection is done so in general there are three types of the inspection for example if it is a application for the grant of the bab study center then once the applicant apply to the central licensing authority with all the regulatory documents and the requisite fees what we have seen in our previous uh, lecture as per the new drug and clinical trial rule 2019 then the licensing authority and his officers they scrutinize the application and before giving the uh, final not they may conduct a inspection to see whether the actual facility is there or not whether the adequate infrastructure manpower resources has been provided or not so for that purpose also they can cause inspection then after having the satisfactory 
कंप्लायंस दे मे गिव देम द परमिशंस और द ग्रांट ऑफ द स्टडी सेंटर्स द नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ द इंस्पेक्शन मे बी आफ्टर ग्रांटिंग द अप्रूवल और द परमिशंस सो वंस द इन केस ऑफ द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल इफ इट हैज बीन गिवन द क्लिनिकल ट्रायल एन ओ सी देन विदर दैट दैट स्टडी साइट और द सेंटर इज कंप्लाइंग विद द कंडीशंस गिवन इन दिस सिटी साइट टू वेरीफाई दैट देर कैन बी अ रूटीन इंस्पेक्शन एंड फॉर द इन द केस ऑफ द बी ए बी स्टडी सेंटर देर इज ऑल्सो प्रोविजन टू हैव द रूटीन इंस्पेक्शन ऑफ सच अ स्टडी सेंटर to verify whether the study center is complying with the conditions of the license and as per the the compliance as per the new drug and clinical trial then one more type of inspection we can say that is a for cause inspection whenever there is a in the knowledge of the licensing authority that there is a violations of some conditions or there are some complaints regarding the not uh, not conducting the trial in accordance with the gcp guideline or not complying with the condition of the permission by the bab study center in that case also with or without prior notice the licensing authority can cause a inspection in such cases mostly it is without notice and we call it as a surprise inspection so what is expected by the inspector so this is these are my personal views what we mostly focus on the inspection so actually we have to keep in mind the three three things and that are three p's we can say the first p is personnel then premises and the processes so these three things we have to look into the we have to keep into the mind while Uh, having the inspection we'll see it in detail in our next uh, slides then what are the type of deficiencies so there are there are three types of deficiencies which can be categorized as a critical major and minor deficiencies the critical deficiencies are those deficiencies which certainly affect the quality of the procedure and the quality of the results and the integrity of the results certainly it will affect the safety of the subjects involved in the participations and based on such critical observations that permissions or the study center approval that can be cancelled the major deficiencies we can say they may or may not you know affect the quality of the trial or they may or may not affect the safety of the uh, subject participating into the uh, study whether it is a clinical trial study or whether it is a bab study but we cannot ignore all these majors also and minor also because sometimes this major major that can become a critical if we do not uh, take into the consideration all these major observations the minor observations that that are required to uh, prevent and that may not harm uh, to the subject and they not that may not uh, impact on the quality of the uh, trial but certainly as i have said for the major sometimes the many minor observation and it may affect and cause the major and many of the major observation that can cause a critical observation so we have to take care of all this critical major and even the minor observations let us see what is the procedure of inspection and when the regulatory authorities when and how they conduct the inspection so whenever there is application for the this is particularly related to the bab study center whenever there is applications for the bab study center the uh, regulatory authorities and his officers they review the applications and accordingly then propose the inspections within certain time period they have to submit the report the auditor has to submit the report to the licensing authority and the licensing authority after reviewing the report 
the observations and the recommendation given by the auditor in this case the drug inspectors they may grant the permission to have the study center of bioavailability and bioequivalence in some cases if there is a uh, there is no clear cut recommendation and if the things can be improved then in that case the licensing authority can issue them the query letter to improve the deficiencies and once that deficiencies has been rectified by the applicant it has to be submitted to the licensing authority licensing authority having the satisfaction that the applicant has rectified all the deficiencies to the satisfactory level of the licensing authority the licensing authority may grant the permission to the bab study center in this case it is important to know that if this deficiency is to be rectified if it is related to the infrastructure then after having the submission of the report of from the applicant again the licensing authority can cause inspection to verify whether they have rectified all the deficiencies or not in case if these deficiencies are related to the for example for the sops are not there or any other things are there or the sops are not clear so these deficiencies the applicant can applicant can solve at their end and they can submit the rectified deficiencies along with the proper document to the licensing authority in such cases most of the time there would be no inspections so this is about the inspection procedure now let us move to our 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 actual part that is the deficiencies so these are certain deficiencies there may be a variety of deficiencies and different types of deficiencies that may vary from the inspector to inspector auditor to auditor and side to side so mainly these are the deficiencies uh, with respect to the bab study centers as i have mentioned we have to focus on three p's so the deficiencies related with the premises are mainly the infrastructure provided is not adequate to perform the perform the all the activities related to the bioequivalence and bioavailability studies that may not be located at suitable place there may be uh, no roads there may be uh, no transportation available so they may not handle the properly the bab study center in case of the emergency so that should be located at uh, easily accessible place and also from the away little bit away from the noise and the drainage systems that should have to see further there may be the adequacy of the ancillary facilities for example electricity water or transportation as i have mentioned if electricity failure is there or if uh, you know there in some rural places still there exist the load shedding what we call the power cut is there so this is actually uh, directly related to the that may affect the quality of the product which has been stored if it if it has to be stored into the fridge refrigerated and if there is often power cut or the load shedding then that may affect the quality of the product so these things also required to be taken into the consideration easily accessible and the uh, easily accessible water should be there then there should be inadequate furniture to sit uh, properly the subjects and to uh, rest them there should be a properly power backup in case of the power shedding then uh, for the testing and and the drawing the uh, bloods from the uh, subjects there should be adequate sampling stations in most of the centers uh, with the uh, inadequate space they provide the bunk beds so it depends upon the study if the study is uh, in the patients in in such cases the bunk bed should should be avoided or even if it is provided then the measure should be taken to go to that uh, bed uh, very safely and there should be no harm to the subject participant or to the uh, patient in case of the clinical trials 
Sometimes we find there is no hygienicity in the premises and outside also the premises. Sometimes there are some drainage are there if it is in remote area. So that is also not good and it may affect the health of the subjects. Sometimes the infrastructure is made is uh, in, a, in a such way that it is not possible to clean it and there may be some cobwebs or the ceiling problems. So that is also not good for the premises. In most of the time we have seen that the restrooms provided are not adequate and the patient, the subjects they have to be in queue. And in our guideline it is clearly given how the restroom should be. There should be a restroom for the handicapped people also if they are uh, there and that should be easily accessible and is, that can be easily open. Then some alarm should be there in, in case something happens. That, that all the facilities and this should be provided there. As it is not mentioned that uh, how the facility it should be for the BAB study center, but that should have some you know logical flow. For example, if the subject is coming for giving the ICF and he has submitted the ICF, then again he has to go somewhere for very long to approach the next stage and again after this next stage again he has to return back to the first stage. So that logical flow should be there to avoid any, you know, it should be hassle free and should be convenient to all. So these, these are few of the observations with related to the premises. Then with related to the peoples that uh, the observations, there may not be a qualified uh, staff. And in this regard, the investigator, it is very important to have the proper qualification and subject knowledge. And it should not be like that in case of the clinical trial, the trial is going on for the oncology product and the investigator who has been looking after is not having any knowledge of the oncology product and he may be from the different streamline. So that is also that is also not actually allowed and that should be avoided. And be it is a investigator or any other a staff member who are, who are directly looking after the trial like a nursing staff or the analyst and the other staff, they should be properly trained as per the SOP and the SOP should be developed for their training. And after training the how much they have understood, how much they, they could figure out from the training that should be evaluated. It should not be a just verbal training and the people are listening and nobody is understanding but you have taken the signature and to show to the inspector and the licensing authority that you have uh, conducted the training that should not be there there should be a proper you know procedure for giving the uh, uh, training to the employees and whatever the training has been given whether they have understood or not that should be verified through the evaluation there should be a proper sop then adequate manpower should be there Otherwise, if uh, for example, the trial is with the 100 of the subject or the 100 of the patients and only few of the staff they are attending them, though it, it has not been mentioned in the uh, new drug clinical trial rule, but that should be adequate you know, to avoid this uh, hassling and to have the convenient and the pleasant atmosphere. Then the role and responsibilities that should be clearly identified and SOPs for them should be provided and it should be given to the individual individual worker and individual employee of the institution so that he should be well conversant with his uh, roles and responsibilities. The training about SOPs equipment that I have mentioned. So the uh, related to the equipment, the training should be given to all the employees. Then all the employees they should be checked before before joining. They should there should be a, their medical checkup and they should be healthy. Then the attendance log most of the time they are not maintaining in at the site. So whether the employee has has attended or not attended whether he or she was on the leave so that should be that should be maintained properly 
there should be some restricted area for the restricted peoples for example in case of the pharmacy only the pharmacists or investigator they should be allowed no no other people should be allowed to avoid the misuse or the mismanagement in the pharmacy area so that should be identified there should be there should be no communication gap between all the employees otherwise there there may be a duplicacy of the work if for example there are three or four staff of the nurse and everybody is withdrawing the sample and there is no communication whether they have they have taken the samples or not or there may be a possibility of taking the samples again and again so there should be a proper communication and the most important there should be comfort to all the employees proper ventilation should be there proper water system should be there so that the atmosphere would be very pleasant and the efficiency efficiency should be increased the processes are uh, most important and in this uh, i would like to say there should be a first uh, sop of sop we call it as a master sop that should be there and this uh, sop should specify how to prepare other sops where when should be the version change what should be the title in what format it has to be written who has to return it who has to approve it who has to sign it one clear cut master sop should be there and accordingly other sop should be prepared then whatever the equipments valid uh, equipments and the instruments provided that should that should have the proper preventive maintenance and the tag should be there and again they should be properly validated and cal- calibrated where it is uh, necessary and that that should also carry a tag so that if it is uh, every after 6 months then where is when is the due date when they have uh, when they have you know calibrated or uh, validated previously that date should be there and whether and as and when there is a uh, there is a due date due date it should be calibrated properly the record should be kept uh, kept in a proper archival system so that there would be no loss of the record and it should be kept for the time as what is mentioned in our new drug and clinical trial rule for bb study the data should be maintained for the 5 years so the people should be aware about all this audit trial data integrity nowadays data integrity is the biggest problem so that that policy should be there how to avoid this in integrity problem then av recording that should be also the audio and video recording should be also properly audible otherwise you would you would record it and if it is not audible to the auditor whenever comes in it has no use again the method whatever applied for example for centrifugation or any other for method analysis that should be validated so that the correct results come out the important thing is that ip should be stored properly and into the pharmacy the storage condition should be mentioned on the label and that should be verified it is most of the time we have seen the ip the storage condition is different and it is stored at the different places and by the different people it is having no label so that should be avoided protocol deviation enrollment of subject prior the approval of the license in the uh, many of the times we have seen and it is it is a critical uh, it can be considered as a critical observation that without having a permission from the licensing authority sometimes what the sponsor do that assuming that today or tomorrow we are going to get the permission they start the clinical trial and this is the big violation they should not big we can say this is a critical violation they should not do this they should not you know initiate the clinical trial or bio bioavailability bioequivalence study before the approval by the ethics committee as well as the licensing authority and once the permission has been issued the applicant should read all the conditions most of the time we have seen they have been issued a permission or the grant of license with certain condition but most of the time 
they are they are ignoring this condition and they are not treating properly the conditions and whenever the inspector goes there and read the condition then then he find out they have not followed the conditions that may be a major violation so these are the some of the my personal observations and opinion at the last i would like to i would like to say that with respect to sop and the procedure and premises to avoid any major and critical deficiencies the firm should have the policy and they should all the employee should do whatever it is written in the documents whatever it is written in the sop and whatever they are doing that should be written to avoid any further non compliances if there are some non compliances then what would be the consequences of this inspections so if it is as i have mentioned if it is for the bab study center and if it is a inspection prior to the approval then if there are many deficiencies then that could delay the approval process of the uh, permission or of the study centers if the study has been conducted and if there are some major or critical observation that study may be invalidated or the results may not be consider appropriate in certain cases if there are critical observations and these observations they are not rectified within time and keep continuing uh, continue doing this uh, uh, you know all practices in that cases if it is a uh, if it is a uh, all if it is all the in, uh, unethical practices in that cases the investigator may be disqualified or restricted for conducting future studies so these are the observations and procedures now it's time for you to answer some of the questions so the first question for you as per neutral and clinical trial rule which chapter contains the clinical trial city inspection rule i have mentioned it in the very first slides so this is a chapter first and rule 29 so let us summarize what we have learned from this lecture so we have seen in this lecture what is means by inspection what are the types of the deficiencies what are the types of the inspection what is the objective of the inspection and what are the different types of the deficiencies commonly observed with respect to the with respect to the personal premises and the procedures so this is all about lecture 20 and we will meet in our next lecture till then you take care thank you and bye bye